The concept of the iPhone SE is simple. Give people a small, capable, and affordable iPhone. And in the past, it's always been an outstanding value, but this year it's a little bit confusing. From a design standpoint, we've got the same iPhone 8 body with rounded edges, larger bezels on the top and the bottom, and a home button. Now, I remember moving from the iPhone 7 Plus to the 10s as my primary phone and having to learn all the new gestures and missing the home button. Well, now going back to a home button, I'm having to retrain all that old muscle memory. With previous models, I didn't think this was something that the majority of the target audience for this phone is going to have to deal with because they're unlikely to go from a higher end iPhone to the SE. But now I'm actually curious to see how this new design holds up. Now, as far as color, I got the red one. I think this deeper red brushed aluminum finish on the edges looks great. And this year's model also comes in midnight and starlight. Now, even though this design is an older one, the 2022 iPhone SE packs a serious punch when it comes to performance. We're getting the same A15 Bionic chip that Apple put in the iPhone 13, which makes this phone easily the most powerful phone at this price point, and by almost a laughable margin. I have all three new Galaxy S22 phones, the regular, the Plus, and the Ultra. All of them feature the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, all of them cost significantly more than the $429 iPhone SE, and yet the A15 chip on the SE outperforms those phones by a noticeable margin when it comes to both single and multi-core performance. Now, I don't actually expect the average iPhone SE user to be a power user. That's just simply not who this phone is designed for. But for example, if you're buying this phone for a kid, this level of performance means that they could use this phone for a really long time before it slows down and it's unable to handle new apps and games. Now, I'll get to gaming in just a minute, but this phone is also a good option if you're an adult who wants an iPhone because you like the operating system or you're already part of the Apple ecosystem, but you don't necessarily need all the bells and whistles that the iPhone 13 offers. And by buying this phone, you'd be getting an affordable phone that should last you again for a very long time. And by the way, if you're comparing this third generation to the second generation SE, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM instead of three. And again, that's exactly what you get on the iPhone 13. Moving on to the display, we're starting to see where Apple continues to save money. We're looking at a 4.7 inch display with a resolution of 1334 by 750, 625 nits maximum brightness, and 326 pixels per inch. And as a point of reference, the iPhone 13 mini has a smaller footprint, but a larger 5 0.4 inch display with a higher resolution of 2340 by 1080. It's brighter at 800 nits of max brightness for SDR content, and it has a higher pixel density of 476 pixels per inch. The mini also has a much higher contrast ratio and it's an HDR display, but this isn't a detailed comparison video. So let's just leave it at the mini is a smaller phone, but it has a larger and better display. Now for the type of user who's going to buy the iPhone SE, this display will work, but I think this should definitely be the last iteration of this phone that still uses this old display. Now to me, this is one of the more glaring drawbacks to this phone, especially when there are other phones at this price point that offer larger and better displays. Like I can live with 60 Hertz because again, it's a budget phone, but 4.7 inches with larger bezels definitely feels outdated. Now looking at the camera system, this iPhone SE actually has a trick up its sleeve. We're getting the same 12 megapixel rear facing camera and a seven megapixel front facing camera. So in terms of hardware, we're not seeing an upgrade from the previous model, but that doesn't mean that it won't take better pictures. What this phone has that the previous model didn't is the A15 Bionic chip and with it the new ISP or image signal processor. This is where computational photography really comes into play and to simplify it, when you take a picture, this phone can use the same sensor and lens to get a better overall image by analyzing the scene taking multiple images and then selecting pixels from different exposures to achieve an image that's sharper, has better dynamic range and has less noise than what you could do with a single exposure. Overall, for a single camera phone, or for that matter, for any phone at this price point, I've been extremely impressed with the quality of the images. Of course, we're not getting some of the more premium features that I'm used to having with more expensive phones like an ultra wide or a zoom lens, but personally, I'd rather have one really good camera instead of two mediocre ones. But we also have to keep in mind the fact that Apple is trying to hit a certain price point with this phone. And adding components that are available on the iPhone 13 mini, for example, would just cause this phone to creep up in cost. And also, I would guess that the overwhelming majority of iPhone SE users 
aren't coming from an iPhone that has those more advanced features, so they're unlikely to miss them. Now, if we look at the video capabilities of the SE, again, for a $429 phone, it's probably as good as you can get. Just like the previous model, you can record it up to 4K60, and you can shoot slow motion at 1080p with up to 240 frames per second. One thing that I found interesting is that you do have night mode time lapse on the iPhone SE, which wasn't available on the previous model, but at the same time, time, you don't get night mode for photography. So it's kind of strange because clearly it's able to process the individual exposures for a time lapse, but then it can't do that for a single photo. Now, when it comes to battery life, as you'd expect, the iPhone SE is outperformed by the higher end models, especially this year as the iPhone 13 took a big leap forward. Now, to give you a sense of rating, the previous iPhone SE was rated for 13 hours of video playback. This iPhone SE is rated for 15, and the iPhone 13 mini is rated for 17 hours. And of course, just like with any device, your actual runtime will depend on what you're doing with your phone. So if you're a light user, you can probably get through a day of use, but if you're going to be doing any gaming or anything that's even somewhat heavy in terms of battery usage, you'll need to find some time during the day for a quick charge. And that's really the downside of having this more powerful chip. You're able to push it harder and you can do more than you'd expect with a budget phone, but then you pay the price in terms of battery life. So it's kind of like having a car that has a big engine, it can go really fast, but it has a really small gas tank. So you need to be mindful of how you drive it if you want to make it home without having to get more gas. Now, that analogy made sense in my head, so I hope it tracks. Now, the good thing is that this phone charges fairly quickly. So even 15 to 20 minutes at my desk or in the car made a significant difference. It'll go from zero to 50% in about 30 minutes with a 20 watt charger and you can charge it wirelessly at up to 7.5 watts. Now let's talk about gaming, because this is kind of like a perfect first iPhone for a kid, but what we get here is sort of a mixed bag. So as far as capabilities, it can run any game, no problem, like literally any game I tried. You wanna play Asphalt 9, go for it. PUBG, no problem. Genshin, yup. Now, playing on a smaller display was definitely more challenging. For some games, it doesn't matter, but if you're looking for someone who's sniping you while wearing a ghillie suit and hiding behind a rock, then you need better eyes than I have. And I can tell you that even going to the 5.4 inch display on the iPhone 13 mini makes a meaningful difference in terms of gaming. Now, as far as the actual gameplay and the graphics settings in PUBG, you can go up to HDR for graphics with extreme frame rate or ultra HD for graphics with ultra for frame rate. As you would expect with all this power, gameplay was very smooth and the phone was really snappy. But remember that when you're playing more demanding games, you are using up that battery very quickly. Now, if you want to game when you're out and about, this phone does actually offer 5G. So if you have that available in your area, you can take advantage of that faster speed. Of course, if you have Wi-Fi available, I recommend that you use it because it'll help you better manage your battery life. All right, so saying all that and taking into account this mashup of ultra high-end components with seemingly outdated tech, would I still recommend this iPhone SE? The answer might surprise you, it might confuse you, but to some users, I would still say yes. If you're watching this video because you love tech and always want the newest phone around, you love 120 Hertz, a big display, multiple cameras, and maybe even a folding phone, this phone just simply wasn't designed for you. But there are still people out there who just want something that feels familiar, something that runs iOS and gets or keeps them in the Apple ecosystem, a phone that's simple, affordable, and has plenty of processing power to keep up with the outstanding long-term operating support that Apple offers. And to those people, for $429, there is no place like home. Now you should check out some of my favorite iPhone SE accessories. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.